Hey, what's up? This is Alfresco Dining here. Everybody sick of seeing the big red boots right now? Too bad. Because we're going to talk about them. However, I'm not going to be the one millionth person to do the I am very smart, hmm, look at all these idiots buying consumer products. Nor am I coming with the opposite consumer mindset of, wow, limited product over there, I must consume. Instead, we're going to take a slightly more nuanced approach so we can come away with the 100% objectively correct opinion, which you can download and pretend is your own to sound smart to everyone else. And the big red boots are the perfect example of the state that the fashion world is in right now. I think these absolutely nail what they set out to do, but is that something we should be applauding? The answer is more complex than it appears, and I think it's definitely worth talking about. So let's go. First things first, we need to understand a little bit about who Mischief actually are. You probably will have seen some of their headline grabbing previous releases, like the Lil Nas X collab draped in overt satanic references which caused religious conservatives such a problem they called for a ban and unwittingly boosted their profile massively. Not to mention the co-sign with a super relevant artist at the time. The apparent drop of blood in every shoe only served to boost their profile more, as did the ensuing Nike lawsuit, because um, they may be look a little bit similar to an existing shoe. The brand's releases since their creation in 2016 have been massively varied and almost always have a satirical or a tongue-in-cheek or at least a playful edge to them. From toaster-shaped bath bombs and death sugar pills to Fruit Loop boxes with one enormous Fruit Loop in. God, I would give anything to bite into one of those. They also used to be a marketing agency, so brands could employ them to create viral online experiences for them. And they've had clients like Casper, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Target, to name a few. Although they don't do that anymore, it gives you a very good idea of the kind of thing that this brand is capable of and where their expertise lies. The true output is viral marketing moments, and you probably know that already because you will have seen this brand online about a thousand times, and probably zero times in the real world. How do they make money then if they don't produce that many physical products? The easy answer is they probably don't. In a 2020 interview with Mischief, they stated that their aim essentially was to grow the business, to gain more publicity, to make people a fan of the brand and not the product so we can do whatever the heck we want. They received about 11.5 million of venture capital funding to do exactly that. In my view, investors believe in Mischief's ability to create viral marketing moments and in future scale that into something that generates profit, whether that be from collaborations with very large scale manufacturers, massive upscaling in availability of their physical products, returning to selling that viral marketing ability to other brands, or something completely different. That brings us very nicely to now, February 2023, where Mischief hit us with their latest product, the Big Red Boot. And I don't need to spend too much time going into the appearance of these, an enormous extruded shape intentionally devoid of any external detail, heavily resembling Astro Boy's boots, although apparently the real inspiration was Dora the Explorer's monkey's boots. I'm feeling Pac-Man personally, but the thing is, people's point of reference is in every case something from media, not something real. Nobody's like, yeah, these are basically Tim's, just bigger and redder. No, the link is to anime cartoons video games, thanks to that low detail look that's giving me PS1 game AI upscaled and smoothed over. Nice job on the GTA remakes, Rockstar. This is 100% intentional to make physical a previously unreal item, bringing the online world into reality. And they describe this on the product page in no uncertain terms. They use language like cartoon boots for a cool 3D world. And most importantly, the continued blending of virtual and IRL aesthetics has us chasing super normal stimuli. If you're noticing the parallels in that copy and the theme of our last video concerning hyperreality, then yes, the two are definitely connected. The Big Red Boots are the pinnacle of the hyperreal product, and Mischief knows it. They also look like a symbol, a representation of a boot, a boot emoji more than they do a real boot, and weirdly, that makes them more recognisable as a boot than a regular boot does. Taking this hyperreal symbolic approach is an interesting thing to do, and in my mind has been executed extremely well. These absolutely exude comic book personality, whilst abandoning all tropes of real world boots. Like 
like this says video games to me way more than basically any other video game collab shoe. They also look like they'd be really cool to touch and take a close look at and put on and stomp around in. And I'd be willing to bet even if you totally hate these, given the chance, you'd still give them a go or at least give them a little squish. How badly do you want to wear these boots I right do now? Not. I just want to touch it, please. That is so long as you can get them off, of course, because um yeah, no one wants to have to take a knife to the back of their $350 shoes. I had to do what I had to do, man. There was no other option. I, I didn't want to go down like that. It shouldn't be a surprise that a boot not really shaped like feet wasn't designed with actual wear in mind. They look comfy in a fun, squashy sort of way, but they're also so enormous that there's no way you don't have to do a slightly goofy walk wearing these. Like, imagine walking downstairs. It's just not happening. And furthermore, what are you going to do about styling them? I mean, how would you style them? These are going to be comically overshadowed shadowing anything else you're wearing unless you're one of the few people with an absolutely outrageous wardrobe full of other crazy unreal things. Like with their cartoon inspired shape, this is by design. You can't just photoshop some anime stuff over the top of a regular fit and expect it to look good. Nonetheless, the apparent total failure by Mischief of creating a good pair of boots is the source of much criticism for Clifford the Big Red Boot. It's a clothing product not designed for actual wear, more for social media influencers in a constant race to outdo each other with who can wear the most outrageous stuff, feeding this endless cycle of consumerism. Other critics will remember Mischief as a viral marketing company and identify that the big red boots are just a mechanism to generate the true product of attention, impressions, and engagement. Through product seeding, influencer posts, news articles, and enormous comment section debates combined, it's fair to say they've been pretty successful at pushing the true product out there. Investors will no doubt be rubbing their hands together that the brand they put money into is showing just how powerful it can be at viral marketing. Is that the true product? Probably, at least to some extent, but I don't think it's only about that. Let's return to how these boots are positioned consciously as a hyper-real product, one that's designed to be experienced as much through a lens as it is on the street. We discussed in the hyper-reality video, highly recommended watch by the way, that pretty much all clothing to some extent falls into this category. The difference is the big red boot engages directly with this idea. It forces us to think about the fashion world we live in where such an outrageous product is not only viable, but an instant sellout. Mischief seems to be saying, by consuming products in the way you have been doing as a society, you allowed these to exist. You created the Joker. I think there's also an element of mischief almost tricking people into wearing something like this just by making them crazier than anything else and then presenting them as a desirable fashion product. We're mischief and today we're tricking people into wearing stupid shoes by making them bigger and redder than ever before. Partly it's all a big joke. We're here to laugh at the people that are actually wearing these things. And Hopefully the people wearing them are in on the joke as well. Is it just about tricking people though and making a satirical comment about the clothing culture that we find ourselves in? No, I don't think so. And in fact, I think Mischief are paradoxically almost being more honest than anyone else in this space. How many brands construct this worldview of very specific people wearing their products in specific scenarios, or for outdoor brands presenting them as being worn only in the most rugged, craziest, most outdoorsiest of conditions, knowing full well that many of their consumers, at least the more fashion forward ones, are likely to be wearing this stuff for social media purposes, or at least in far more casual and comfortable surroundings than the marketing would suggest. Mischief are stating here in no uncertain terms, fashion is no longer just about wearing clothing, it is about creating a performance. It's about the online world, it's about the intersection of fashion items designed to be worn and physical products designed to be enjoyed or appreciated outside their context of wearable clothing. And they say, we're gonna make a pair of boots which does that better than anything that came before. And so we have a super interesting dichotomy here. We have a product which is at once exemplary of the current sneaker market and completely antithetical to it. On the one hand, this shoe is pure commodity. It has very little use value, but 100% societal value. Not unlike a pair of hyped shoes, which are valued highly by their limited nature, the interesting colorway, the celebrity endorsement. The Tiffany Dunks ain't gonna make your kickflips any better than a regular pair, and yet people are far more interested in buying those than a general release pair 
of dogs. The large scarlet shoes are even less useful than your regular bog standard pair of boots, so all of their value is from their status as a physical object. On the other hand though, I feel like these are more real than 99% of other sneaker releases for how much they encourage people to actually have a physical experience with them. So many sneaker conversations are not based on materials, interplay of colors, design, how they can work as part of a streetwear outfit, or even the activities that you might do whilst wearing them, but how limited they were when the colorway was last released, who's wearing them, who's collaborating. This is the first hyped release in some time people are actually excited about having a physical experience with, about getting them out of the box and doing something with them. So what if that experience is gonna be mostly around your house, taking some funny pictures, showing your friends, getting all of them to try that on, that's probably a lot more than you're gonna get out of any other pair of hyped sneakers, which will be stocked in their box forever and then sold on StockX in five years time. I mean, forget about which of these two you like the look of the most or would like to wear the most, which one would you rather try on or see in person? If you pick these ones, I don't know what to tell you. For that reason, I think they're a super interesting product with some genuine value and impact, so I find it difficult to be 100% against them. There are some valid criticisms though. One is around the environment and overconsumption. Should we be praising the existence of a clothing item which is not really designed to be worn? It's definitely worth being conscious of that and having a wardrobe full of stuff like this is pretty wasteful. However, at least the price is something of the discouragement. No one's gonna be buying tens of these and treating them like a Shein haul, nor is Mischief themselves going to be making hundreds of thousands of these. If you consider these a display or a collector's item, I don't really feel like from that perspective they're any more harmful than any other high-end decoration or vinyl toy. And I don't mean Funko Pops. Could it encourage future consumer behavior though to be buying things because they are a viral moment or buying products as a joke though? Yeah, maybe, and I think that's definitely not a behavior that deserves to be encouraged. Something like this should definitely be a rare expenditure and not something you're going out every week to buy more of. I think Mischief are better than this, but honestly, I would be really upset if they decided to make 10 different colorways of this boot and people took that gotta collect them all mentality. There will also be people who don't get the joke or don't see the satirical side to these and think instead, wow, they're a product that seems to be getting so much attention, all these famous people are wearing them, I should definitely try and get some as well, maybe that will boost my profile. Even though I don't think these are that badly priced and that they're a lot cheaper than a luxury Balenciaga boot or something, that's still not a healthy consumer behavior to be buying into. The other big question and a very valid reason to be hesitant about buying these, even if you're fully cognizant about their position as a hyper real product, do they have any lasting appeal? From a social media perspective, it seemed like people were already sick of these before they officially released. What if we get hold of them, us regular fashion buyers, only to find that eight weeks later when our product finally gets delivered, that absolutely nobody cares about them anymore, the world has simply moved on and there is just no second wave of interest. It's very possible some other item will have captured people's interest within that point, leaving these as very expensive doorstops and paperweights. And I think something like that is especially likely to happen with a product like like this, where their value is tied exclusively into their position as a viral moment. They're designed as spectacles or objects of interest, and all it takes is one slightly flashier object to knock it off the pedestal, and it's probably not gonna come back. Even worse though, what if they become cringe? What if they get seen so much online that the general fashion opinion becomes not just apathy, but active dislike, and anyone spotted wearing them is seen not just as a bit behind the times, but actively a fashion victim and someone that you wouldn't want to be? then you've just played a very expensive joke on yourself. By that point, if people have the general perception that big red boot owners are all clout chasers, you'll probably find it very difficult to convince people that, oh, actually, you're an enlightened fashion consumer that's buying them, aware of the satirical point that they're trying to make. Please, please, just sit down and watch this 17 minute video about hyper reality, then you'll understand why I bought them, I promise. Yeah, for something you can't really wear, that's an expensive mistake. I feel like I've been fairly neutral in this video, so I'll actually give you my take on these now. As a physical product, I think these are great. To me, they look super cool and interesting, and I really like how they engage with this idea of fashion as a homeware item. If you genuinely want them in your home, you want to show your friends, you want to play with them, are they any different to any other expensive plastic toy? Imagine having expensive plastic toys in your home. 
Couldn't be me. They are an anti-fashion item though, and their meme appeal is going to stop them from ever really being considered a genuine style item, even if you forget about their outrageous appearance. You can't separate these from the virality that surrounds them and the brand generally, and in fact, that's probably a big part of the reason why people are going to want them. They're not some random big red boots, they are THE big red boots. People want to be part of that, that wider cultural moment. The virality is manufactured though, it is a product of the Mischief brand. They're not authentic in the sense that it's not some surprise hit. These were designed to do exactly what they're doing. You might not want to buy into that idea. But honestly, if you're searching for true authenticity in the world of sneakers, you're probably going to have to look pretty hard. And if you're going to be part of this world full of viral hyper real products, I guess you might as well have some fun along the way. Did I try and buy them? Yes. Did I fail because they sold out instantly? Yes. Am I sad about that? Not really. I think the big red boots are having their moment. They will continue to have their moment to some degree. And I think to an extent they will cement their place in history and people will talk about them long term, just as they have some of the other big mischief releases of the past. There is always something new around the corner, something which might appeal to you that a little bit more and maybe something you'll actually want to wear outside, even if I haven't ended up with them. I'm glad that products like this exist, things which don't take themselves too seriously, and things which ask questions and get people to think about the consumer culture and the fashion world that we exist in. An interesting product for sure, and I think there's more behind them than you might assume. But I would love to hear your big red thoughts on the big red boots. Please, whatever your opinion is, definitely stick it down in the comments. I'm really excited to hear the different takes. Let the fighting commence. Thank you so much for watching this big red video. Really hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed thinking about it. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.